So you are a government employee and you are thinking of resigning from GEPF. And one of the things that's concerning you is, how long would it take for GEPF to make payment of your funds? Now, perhaps you've heard of instances where GEPF has taken months or years to make payment of resignation benefits. And your concern is, the longer GEPF takes to make payment of your funds, the longer you have to survive with an income. So how do you manage during that period? Now, I've been able to assist a member to get the payment for off resignation benefit just two weeks after the member had resigned. And in this video, I'm not assuring you that I can do the same for you, but I am sharing with you the secrets. I'm giving you the structure. So what have I done to put in place for this member so that the payment could happen as soon as possible? Now, I'm Dev Anika, and I help GEPF members wanting to resign live the best life possible with the money that they have. Now, let's get started straight away into what this video is all about. Now, what you want to be mindful of is just the processes that GEPF have in place in order to ensure that, well, before your payment actually gets released, right? There's seven processes. Now, these are the processes that are available, were available at the time of me shooting this video. So again, you want to be mindful that things might have changed, right? So it's moving through seven, seven stages. It's going back office, verifications, memberships, purchase of service, legal contribution, and payment. Now, within each of these sections, there's a process, right? So for example, within the payment section, it's not an immediate payment, right? They'll ensure everything is in order with the file. There's a specific, uh, well, they would have to get SARS involved in the process here. So SARS would have to be involved in order to issue what they call a tax directive. If your value is above a million rand, then they might need, they will need authorization in order for that payment to be released. And obviously GEPF would then make the payment, but the payment as well happens on set days. Right? So it's not a straightforward process inside each of these things has, it, has its own timeline. Now, what you want to be mindful of is the entire process has 60 days within which GEPF says they're going to finalize it. Now, I've had instances where GEPF have said that it's 60 days, but sometimes when I've reached out to consultants, especially in instances where it went longer than 60 days, they would tell me it's 60 working days, right? So it all depends, right? 60 days or 60 working days. What does it mean to you? If it's 60 days, it's straightforward. You're looking at about two months, right? Assuming 30 days in a month, so that's two months. If it's 60 working days, then let's assume there are 20 working days in a month, which means working days means it's a three month period, which means it's gonna take three months before GEPF finalizes and then makes payment to you. Now I know what you might be thinking. You're thinking if you if this is where you are now, you should aim at submitting your, and if this is when you wanna resign, you might be thinking, hey, you wanna submit this thing three months ahead, right? Ahead. And this is a mistake that you can make, right? And the reason why this could be a mistake is you're only allowing for the timeline of this particular process to go through. What you also have to be mindful of is there might be some hiccup along the way, and I'll use an example to illustrate, right? Let's just assume that when you submit the application, your, your ID was not submitted or your ID was misplaced, right? Now, this is the critical document. It must be there in order for it to be finalized. Now, let's also assume that for some reason, it didn't get pick up in the, picked up in the back office or the verifications. Somehow, it got picked up here in the membership section that your ID is missing. Now, what takes place is GEPF sends the file back through to your HR. So it's sitting at the membership department here. They would then send it back to your HR, right? And then your HR obviously reaches out to you to say, look, these are the documents that's missing. Please, can you submit them as soon as possible? And obviously, once it's submitted, then your HR submits the application back to GEPF. Now, in that time that the documents haven't been submitted, it causes a delay. So naturally, you want to get it done as soon as possible, right? You submit the outstandings as quickly as possible. The problem is, when the file comes back in, it's not going to go back to the department that identified the mistake. Meaning, if you were in membership department, it doesn't start with membership. It starts again with back office. You see? It starts with back office and it moves through the entire cycle again, the entire seven steps again. I know it seems weird. Again, the process might have changed from the time that I shot this video, but I want to prepare you, right? That you want to look at what you can do in advance. Meaning if this is only fine, let's say it takes you a month to get to memberships. 
and only at membership stage, they find out, hey, your ID is missing. Now it recessed the entire process, which means it could take another three months from there, which means instead of having this paid after three months, it could take longer. So what's the optimal time that I would recommend for you? Optimal time for submitting is six months ahead. Now, if you're allowing yourself six months, what you're doing is you're factoring into account the worst case scenario, right? Worst case scenario is three months ahead, meaning it takes GEPF to, to process this in three months. But you're also taking into account that certain delays might happen along the way, meaning maybe there's a document that you needed to submit, you were not made aware. You're allowing yourself time, right? Because you've given yourself six months. So even if your process had to be reset, let's say at membership, something is missing, if it has to be reset, you're still allowing yourself time. So let's go see this on a timeline. Let's assume you come to this period here, and this is after the first month, they identify something is missing, and they identify something is missing at the memberships department, right? So they send the file back, and it's resetting it. Then let's just say at month two, this is the second month, they identify and we'll, we'll say, let's say it moved over to the legal department. Uh, it would obviously take a bit longer to get there, but let's say at the legal department, especially if there's a divorce, you, there's an additional set of items that are required. Let's say those items are missing, which then means that they're gonna reset it, right? This is at month two. So they submit it again from the beginning, which means you still have to allow a further three months. This is why if you can buy yourself the time by submitting it six months early, you are catering not just for the worst case scenario that GEPF has, which is the three month waiting period. That's the 60 day uh, that I've discussed with you here. You're also taking into account that it's possible something might be missing or you were not told of a certain document that's required and that could delay the process, right? You're getting yourself prepared for that. Now, in the case of the member that I had helped who had received the payment, this is exactly what we did. We submitted the application early it was six months ahead of time. Because we submitted it six months ahead of time, the member kept checking with GEPF and I was also engaging with GEPF to see where along in the process they were, right? Where along. Was there a hiccup? Yes, there was a hiccup. But again, we had the time to process it. So what happened was when it came to the time that the member was actually leaving, right? The month before the member was leaving, it already sat in payment section. I'm gonna say that again, the member is, was resigning. One month before the member's actually resigning, it reached the payment section, you see? So let's put that in here. So that's when the member's resigning and this is when it got to payment section. So what it meant was GEPF could not make the payment because they were still waiting on the member obviously to leave, but they were able to get certain things verified, you see? They were able to scan the document through the back office. They could do the verifications, memberships, uh, analyze if there was purchase of service. So they got to do all those things. Now it's sitting at payment department. So when this member actually resigned, it was sort of easy for GEPF to continue the process, right? And this is how the member had received the payment within two weeks of having resigned from GEPF. Now, as you can imagine, that brought a huge relief to this member. But I also want you to be mindful that sometimes it might not work this case, right? Especially if you don't submit within six months, or again, if, you, if for some reason there's some unnecessary delays here, which means the process now takes longer than six months. Now it shouldn't if, you, if you're starting as early as six months, but I still want you to be prepared that you have some type of emergency funding in place, right? So assume that you've got six months here. I want you to add an extra two months, but here's how I want you to do it, right? So you submit six months early. This is when you submit. And then you also plan for another two months. Uh, this is two to three months, right? Would be ideal. And this is your expenses. Two months expenses, right? So you basically have like an emergency fund, which has two months of expenses inside it, right? So you create an emergency fund. So what it does for you, if you can imagine what I'm sharing with you now, it just is gonna bring you a world of relief, right? knowing that you submitted your application well ahead of time, it gives GEPF more than sufficient time to work within their timeline. So you've put yourself in a position where you can get the payment as early as possible. But in addition to that, 
your mind is at ease because you are prepared financially because you've got a buffer of another two months. So again, if there's some unexpected delay that happens on GEPF side, you know you've got another two months liquid cash that allows you to pay for your debit orders and any of the other expenses that come up. So it doesn't become a rush process. So in total here, you want to look at six months of planning. But remember, as I said, you want to keep two months of emergency expenses, right? Now, you can plan all of this well if you're planning ahead of time. So if you work this thing backward, if you are submitting six months ahead, it means your, your planning has to start well ahead, right? Because if application is getting submitted here, it means you've already done tax planning. You've already done the investment planning. You already have an idea on the amount of income you're going to take. You already have an idea as to the entire structure that's going to happen post-resignation, you see? So in order for that to take place, you've got to engage with a financial well, a GEPF resignation specialist as early as possible. And I would recommend for that, the ideal time to plan would be three years. So if you can get your planning done three years ahead, here's what it does. In year one and year two, you basically are having an experience with your GEPF resignation specialist, checking to see, hey, is this specialist really good? Can they help you to save on tax? Can they help you to grow your wealth? Can they put your, uh, your money in a place that is protected from the markets if that is a concern for you? So you're building a relationship with your specialist, right? Now you can do that inside of this period here. You're also monitoring the investments on a monthly basis. So you're getting to see how well the investment's performing. So this puts you in the best possible position so that when you come to resignation, you've overcome certain concerns, right? You know that you've got a specialist who can help you with tax because you've tested them two years before. You know you've got a specialist who can help you with growing your wealth because you've tested them two years before. And you know that you've got someone who can show you how to protect your capital from the markets because you've tested them two years before. So between year two and year three, this is a period that you can actually get the paperwork ready in order for your GEPF application to run smoothly. And again, you submit this six months before you're actually leaving. And again, if you've got a good resignation specialist, the person's created for you the two months liquidity. Now, if you follow this video as I've guided you, if you put yourself in the position to ensure that your GEPF payment is gonna be received as in the shortest possible time, but also mentally your mind is gonna be at ease because you know that everything is, is well taken care of, right? You've planned ahead of time. Now, if you're looking for a shortcut, if you are concerned about things like tax, if you're worried about how do you grow your wealth, and if you're wanting to protect your capital, I specialize in helping GEPF members with these particular areas. So I, I invite you to reach out to me. You can either join my masterclass so that you get a comparison of retiring and resigning to get a feel for what this works out to. Or if you want to fast track your process and see how I've done this for other members, then you're welcome to reach out to me. You can find my details in the description on this YouTube video, and I'll be able to offer you more support. Now, if you found the video helpful, please give me a thumbs up so I know I'm on track with you. And if you have any comments, if there's certain questions that you have or something that you're uncertain of, I invite you to post in the comments below of the YouTube video so that I can offer you additional support. Now, last thing, remember, the more we help our others, the more we help ourselves. So there are many members within GEPF who do not have access to this key information, right? It's information that empowers them to make wiser decisions. So I encourage you to share the link to the video to them so that they can also have this type of empowerment.